Crawly is a web scraping and browser automation library that helps you build reliable scrapers fast. This is because it handles all of the boring and complicated overheads for you. To get started, copy the npx crawly create command from the homepage in the docs and paste it into your terminal. Then choose from the drop-down list of either TypeScript or JavaScript templates and hit enter on the one that you like. It's going to automatically generate some boilerplate code for you and also install all the dependencies that you need to get started. After the install is done, cd into your new projects folder and you'll notice that there are already a bunch of files there for you such as a docker file, a package.json, and a tsconfig if you're using TypeScript. Remember how I said that Crawly handles all of the overheads of web crawling for you? Well, I wasn't kidding. You can use the proxy configuration class to automatically rotate through proxies. Simply create a new instance, pass it into a crawler, and pass in a list of proxy URLs that you'd like to rotate through. And that's it. Crawly will handle the rest. To make sure the documentation is not lying to us, we can send a request to this request bin to see that it's actually using our proxies. Once the request is made, we can check it out in the request bin and see that Crawly is in fact using one of the IP addresses in our proxy list. Perfect. We can also see that Crawly has statistically generated some headers based on real-world data and send them along with the request to make it appear more human-like. These proxies and generated headers are assigned to user-like sessions that are automatically managed by the session pool. If a session gets blocked or repeatedly performs poorly, then the session will be discarded and the associated proxy will be removed from the rotating list. Up to this point, we've been using Cheerio Crawler, which makes static HTTP requests, but we can easily change it over to a Playwright Crawler that runs a headless browser just by switching around some imports and a few lines of code, and then installing the Playwright package from NPM. Now let's build a simple recursive crawler using Playwright Crawler. You can use the full power of Playwright's page API, but we'll go ahead and use parse with Cheerio to parse the HTML return back to us, and we can gain access to the familiar jQuery dollar sign simply by awaiting this function. So, we want to scrape the title of each page and save it somewhere. Luckily, Crawly's got that covered for us as well with the dataset class. First, we'll scrape the title with Cheerio and then save it to the default dataset by calling the dataset.pushdata function and passing it an object with the title. And that's it. All of our titles will now be saved to the disk. Then the stored data can be interacted with in the future using methods like get data or for each. And in order to make this a recursive crawler, we'll use the enqueue links function to automatically enqueue all crawly.dev links on each page to the request queue. To do this, we can simply just call this function. When you start this crawler, you'll notice that an automated Chrome browser opens up and first goes to the Crawly homepage, then starts recursively crawling through every page on the website. Once the crawl is finished, you'll notice in the storage folder that there are now a bunch of new items in the default dataset. These are all a result of us calling the dataset.pushdata function. Notice that they are automatically enumerated for you, going 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, so you don't have to worry about it. The purpose of this video was just to show you a small taste of what Crawly can do to help you build scalable and reliable crawlers quickly. But to learn more about its features, head over to the documentation and give the introduction a quick read.